reintroducing compassion as an idea, a political idea. Uh, a lot of people might be familiar with Aristotle's theory of stasis and the reason why revolutions happen, and we're living in revolutionary times. The, uh, the reason revolutions happen, according to Aristotle, is that philia breaks down, love breaks down in a society, and, and people lose the compassion for the other. Before you can really talk about healing, you have to look at the diagnostics uh, to understand what's going on. There's a verse uh, in the Quran that tells us that one of the reasons why we were created was for the cultivation of the earth. That the, the verse says that it was God who brought you into the being from the earth and settled you therein to cultivate it. Sta'marukum fiha. So imara is cultivation and it, it's, it, it indicates a lot of different things that humans do. And this is why anybody who's involved in cultivation of the earth in a positive way is fulfilling a divine purpose, whether they believe in the divine or not. That they are fulfilling a divine purpose. And this is often lost on uh, religious peoples that are working from a provincial tradition and not recognizing that everybody is here for a reason. Uh, the second is the, the purpose is actually to worship, to adore the Creator. And this is obviously from the Abrahamic traditions that I only created unseen beings and human beings to worship me. And then finally, stewardship. The idea of being caretakers of what we've been given. This is called the Khalifa. And the Khalifa is one who stands in place. And the Quran tells us that God said, I'm placing in the earth a steward. And a steward is one who acts on the behalf of another. And so this is divine stewardship. And then David, we're told uh, in, the, in the Jewish tradition, that David, uh, we have made you a steward over the land. Judge fairly between people. Do not follow your desires. It's a really important point about this because stewardship is corrupted by following desires. And lest they divert you from this divine plan. And so the question is, how are we doing as stewards? So just to look maybe at some of the signs. Um, one of the verses in the Quran says that corruption, and the word is fasad, has appeared on land and on sea because of what people have earned by their acts to make them taste some of what they have done that they might turn back. So the idea of when, when, when we do things in the world that are, that are dangerous and negative, then we get this repercussion. And the reason for that repercussion, it's actually a mercy because it's letting you know that you need to turn back that you're doing something wrong. And so you cannot go out and sow corruption without having the corruption come back at you in what in economic terms is externalities. Now the traditional interpretation, which is from the seventh century of one of the great Quran interpreters, Abdullah ibn Abbas, about this, he said the signs of corruption, of fasad, on land are fires, soil degradation, the lowering of the water tables, and among the signs of corruption in the sea is the diminution of the fish. So, so the fish begin to disappear. It's an important reminder that the earth is not just for human beings. One of the verses in the Quran is that it's God who spread out the earth for all living creatures. It literally says, Lil Anam. And the Anam are, it literally means all those that sleep. Uh, so it's all sleeping creatures. It's a place where you should feel safe and secure. It's a place of repose. You can't sleep unless you feel safe or secure. And many of the animals are suffering. So now, what are the roots of this crisis? At, at, at the heart of it is the modern doctrine uh, of the consumer. A period about from the 1890s till the 1930s and shows how our society was turned into a consumer society. It was conscious. It was done because they could produce a large number of goods and they wanted people to buy those goods. So we have to understand that this was something that was done to us. That people were not always consumers. And another major problem is the war economy. We were warned by Eisenhower as he was departing after spending his life serving the military and working with the, the military industry. He warned us about this new phenomenon, the military-industrial complex. And we have to recognize that 
The type of budgets that this country has for military spending are, are obscene. They are obscene. And it's money that could be going to much, much uh, better things. This is the result of the aerial bombing that happened in Germany. And this is why we have to end uh, war. And, and you can certainly see that the incredible amount, we, over almost 200 million people were killed at the hands of other people in, in the last century, the 20th century. Now, just moving to the self, what are some of the signs? Autism in 1970, and people can argue that this is from diagnostics and things like that, but, but we know from 2012 to 2013, no, something's happening here. We had one in 10,000 diagnosed. I mean, the first di di diagnosis of autism was in the 1950s, but now it's one in 50 in the United States. I mean, we have to really think seriously about what's happening. Now, if you look at the definition of autism, a pervasive developmental disorder characterized by severe deficits in social interaction and communication, by an extremely limited range of activities and interests, and often by the presence of repetitive stereotype behavior. This about defines everybody under 30. I mean, we have to really think about what's happening to our young people that are growing up with this technology. Repetitive, stereotypical practices, losing the ability to interact socially. Another major problem that we have is obesity. The Quran, and this is in all our traditions because gluttony is one of the deadly sins, but it reminds people, eat and drink but not to excess. God loves not the extravagant wasters. But when you go to a restaurant, they say, enjoy, right? Enjoy is, you know, I mean, I guess you could make it a transit, intransitive, but mm -hmm. you usually enjoy something. Um, but here it means the food, so, uh, but they just say enjoy. You know, in, in traditional cultures, they never would say something like that. They would say like salud, you know, mm -hmm. with health. In, in the Arabic culture, they say the sahwa al-afiyah, with health and well-being which reminds us of the purpose of the food. It's not to enjoy. Enjoyment is part of it. I mean, it's, it's mm. wonderful that food is so enjoyable, but that's not the reason why you're actually eating it. That's why the glutton eats. But, but somebody who's serious about maintaining their health, they eat for health. And, and you know, we, we're, we're literally digging our graves with our teeth. I mean, in our culture, we are literally killing ourselves with the food we eat. There's a, a tradition that we have from our prophet that a believer will not go to bed satiated knowing his neighbor is hungry. And, and that's any neighbor of any faith. And so, so, you know, I would say that all traditional peoples ate with, with just a knowledge of what food was about. And this is why the Kisharat tradition, you know, the, the halal tradition that you have to, there's a whole, you know, Native Americans took permission mm -hmm. uh, in many of the, their traditions. They took permission from the animal in, in the Islamic tradition, in the Jewish tradition. There is actual, you have to do it in a way, you know, in our tradition, you're not allowed to kill an animal in front of another animal. And if you look, I mean, it's arguable that it's unethical to, be, to, be, to eat meat today. Unless you're on a farm where you're, you're you know, and I, I, there was an interesting article about a man who decided for one year, I, I didn't see the film, but he did a documentary where he only ate what he killed mm -hmm. for one year. And when he would buy the, the, the sheep, one of the sheep farmers told him, you know, he said, I think I'm going to call that, you know, Zeke. And, and he said, no, no, no don't name them because you'll get, you'll get attached to them. And, but he chose to name them. What he said was the thing that struck him most was the gratitude he felt to the animal when he ate it. And in our tradition, there's a belief that the animal wants to be, it wants to be energy for good deeds. I want to point out in traditional cosmology, what happens inside of us happens outside of us. If you want to know why the oceans are acidic, it's because we're becoming acidic, literally we are becoming acidic. The world manifests our states, and that's why knowing our states is so important, because how we are, how we behave, what we do, all of this is going to be reflected 
in, in the world. The macrocosm can only reflect the microcosm. And so the acidosis of the oceans is related to the acidic levels that are happening. People are moving away from the natural state, which is an alkaline state, and moving towards an acidic state. And this is another really serious problem, the problem of lust that we're really not dealing with in our society. I really think we're in a deep denial about the serious problem of lust in this culture. And, and one, one of the, the most important thermometers for it is pornography. And there's... There's a verse in the Quran that says that we elevate those who do not want to sow corruption in the earth or to be elevated. And, and, and this is what we have to remember as a species that we have people in this world that remind us of who we really are. And there's... We're not jellyfish. We're not mindless, spineless consumers. We have human hearts. We have the ability to know infinity. We can conceptualize it. No other species can do that. We are something amazing. And we have to remind our young people of that. Lost in this world of false idols, of images of women that are so degrading they are so degrading. And I don't need to name names because you know them. You see them on the television. You see them on the covers of magazines. This is not who we want our young girls to grow up emulating. We don't want our young men to grow up emulating the lowest forms of life on this earth. We want them to soar with the eagles. And that's what we're here to do and to remind people. As far as I'm concerned, as religious people, the religious leadership, we have failed so dramatically. We have failed our young people. We have the halo effect, and then we have the clay feet syndrome. They, they don't see people walking their talk. They don't see people living it. They don't see the gift of sanctity in their beings, in their presence. And that's what we need to remind ourselves that we have to become these people. We have to be these people that have graced this earth, reminding us this is not what it's about. We're here for a short temporal time, and we have work to do. And our work is in discovering ourselves and in serving others. This is the work. We're not here to consume. We're not here to indulge ourselves. We're here for something much greater and we constantly need to be reminded because we're a forgetful species. When the elephants came to honor the man who had, had looked after them, and some of you may have seen this, but they walked for over a day even before he died and then held vigil in front of his house. These are signs for people that reflect. The animals pray for us. According to our tradition, the, 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 the fish in the ocean pray for the righteous. Our Prophet said, The one who has repose and the one others have repose from them. They said, Who are they, O Messenger of God? And he said, Those who live righteously, when they die, they have repose. And those who live corrupting, when they die, people, trees, rivers, and animals have repose from them. That's the choice.